I have seen and heard about all manners of things happening to people, especially in groups. One friend done got killed overseas. Guy can't find his wife. This wife wakes up without her husband. All crazy thing. <music> family i truly hope all is well with each and every one of you so as you guys should know by now i am in the beautiful costa rica i have been absolutely loving my time here super excited to be here i'm so grateful to god and universe and spirit for just bringing me back around to what is my calling what lights up my spirit and what is just such an important aspect of my life which is travel you know, it's quite comical because most people see me traveling here on this channel and they may think, oh, it's just fun. She's just a free spirit. She's adventurous. Yes, all of those things are true. But really and truly, this goes so much more deeper than just hopping on a plane, traveling from country to country. This journey that I'm on goes spirit deep. And if by chance you would love to go even more spirit deep with me, a little bit more raw and real, I have another channel where I go by Kiara Deshaun. So feel free to head over there. I'll put the link down in the description box where you can feel free to just go a little bit more deeper with me as I talk about the many different aspects of my past, present, and what we're trying to do in the future, and just how it has shaped me as the young woman that I am today. But for now, let's go ahead and get into the topic of today's video. How to travel easy and stay safe on your journey. So some of the things that I'm going to mention should be common sense and it should go without saying, but you would think with AI and all the other technological advancements that we have at our fingertips that these things shouldn't be in question. But I feel as though because we live in a time where there is so much information, I do feel that many people may have what we call information overload. And sometimes it can be so hard to pinpoint exactly what's accurate or just how to fact check what it is that you're looking up, especially when we're living in an age where Things are dynamic. Things are always changing. They're ever changing, especially when you talk about the topic of travel and international travel. So one, to travel easy, make sure you plan, make sure you research, okay? Depending on the country that you're going to, make sure you understand the laws. I know someone laughed when I was on TikTok Live and I was talking about understanding the laws. And I'm like, what's comical about that? You'll be surprised. I believe I've talked about this in one of my other videos, but I'll never forget almost getting myself in trouble in Barbados because if you are not a part of their military, you are not allowed to wear or mimic or have any other camouflage print or any type of fatigue that is not theirs or are theirs. You can risk being fined or even worse, arrested. No one spends all the, t all the time packing, all the time on these flights, all the hours, just to get to a place, think you're about to have fun and do what it is that you came to do, and now you find yourself deported, you find yourself fined, heavily fined, or you find yourself in prison. So please, look up the laws to these places. Take it very seriously, especially because you're a foreigner. They love to make examples out of foreigners, trust me. Make sure you have all of your documents, if you have to prove you have $2,000 in your bank account, no one cares about how you feel about that. Don't go. Make sure you have $2,000 stored somewhere in one of your bank accounts. Try to have two bank cards or at least two bank accounts where you can have access to your money in the event that an ATM overseas swallows one of your cards or one of them gets lost. But for myself, I have two bank accounts. If all else fails, at least I have a second backup card to be able to access my funds while I rectify the problem. Another tip for how to travel easy is make sure you have your onward or return flight. I understand that sometimes you get to these countries and different countries require different things. It is always better to be prepared than to be sorry. I have a website that I use called Onward Ticket. I love this website because what it does is it gives me a return flight back into the U.S. or an onward flight somewhere else while I'm still figuring out exactly where I want to go. And this is especially helpful for those who are full-time traveling and you're not quite sure how long you want to stay in one country or how many days they would even give you when you get to immigration because it's up to them essentially and you just don't want to get ahead of yourself paying for flight out somewhere 30 days 60 days 90 days away and you don't even know if that's a country you will want to go 
or if that's a country that would still even be available to go based on current events, incremental weather, you just never know. So Onward Ticket is great because like I said, all you have to do is pay 14 to 16 bucks, uh, depending on how long you want the validity of that ticket. Most of those tickets have a validity of 24 hours, um, but you can get some for 48, possibly even 72, but you'll pay just a little bit more. It just temporarily holds you a spot. Whenever the immigration agent or whoever it is you're dealing with in whichever country looks at the ticket, if they decide they want to go deeper into investigating the ticket, it'll be valid. Most immigration officials that I've run into out of all the countries I've traveled have not cared. Even this country that I'm in now in Costa Rica, they took the ticket uh, just to get the date on when I was leaving out and that was it. He did not look to see if the ticket was valid. He didn't care. But it's always good to have that. When you show the immigration officials that you plan on leaving their country, the less issues you'll have. Immigration problems are the last type of problems that you want. You also want to do your due diligence and know exactly how many days you're allowed to have in said country that you're planning on traveling. If you're a short-term traveler, this may not mean a lot to you, and I understand that because you may be going somewhere just for a week or a weekend, and then you're headed back to work or your life or whatever it is you're doing. But for those of you who are like me, you're full-time traveling, or you're just looking for a sabbatical or to get away before you head back to whichever your home country is, Passport Index is another great website. Um, they have an app that's also wonderful. It's much more convenient where you can do the visa checker to see what type of visa um, you're going to need, whether you need an e-visa, a visa on arrival, whether you, you're not allowed in that country. <laughs> Super helpful. They also allow you to see exactly how many days that you're allotted. Just because you are allotted 180 days in, say, Mexico, doesn't mean the immigration officials have to give you 180 days. They're going to give you whatever the hell they want to give you, okay? Especially when they start looking around in your passport and if you are a border hopper or if they see that you frequent their country a little bit too often and it looks a little bit suspicious or something about your passport or your movement looks suspicious and you're not able to account for that, they're probably only going to give you about 30 days maximum. So these are just some websites or apps that can help you with traveling just a little bit easier. Another thing that I've seen, I believe it was on TikTok, was their passport was in poor condition. Now, common sense, I know, but, you know, videos like the one I saw on TikTok proves that common sense just really isn't so common. Don't mark up your passports and definitely don't treat it like some receipt in the bottom of a drawer from Walmart. It's your passport. It's literally the golden ticket. If your passport looks a hot mess, they're turning you around, period. Like literally, period. Take care of your damn passport. Get a passport holder. Get a piece of saran wrap or a Ziploc bag and put it in there. You know how different the weather is in many different parts of the world. Don't allow it to get wet, burnt, crispy, snowed up. Like just take care of your stuff, okay? Last tip for helping you travel easy is just to make sure that you do have all of your documents in one place. So when they ask you for it, you got it. Hola, ven acá, come, ven acá. <laughs> Sorry guys, here's my little amiga. <laughs> guys, I just got joined by my little friend. Hola. <laughs> you just wanted to come see me? Yeah, okay. Besos? Besos. Y'all know I make a family everywhere I go. Okay, say adios. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Okay. Oh. Sorry, guys. I got sidetracked by cuteness. Make sure you have all of your documents together. Make sure you have everything ready for them to be able to calculate how long you're going to be here. Know exactly where you're staying. When they ask you for phone numbers, when they ask you for addresses, it's for a reason. They want to know who you are, where you are, where you're going, where you're staying, what is your number, because forbid something happens and they need to save you, they need that information, or forbid you do something stupid, they know where to find you. So the second thing I want to talk about is how to stay safe while traveling. This is so important. It's important for me as a solo female traveler. This is important for anyone. It doesn't matter whether you're male or female, whether you're traveling in groups, whether you're traveling alone, you're traveling with your partner, traveling with your entire family. Safety while traveling abroad is super imperative. I have seen and heard about all manners of things happening to people, whether they have been traveling in groups, especially in groups, people not coming, making it home. One friend and got killed overseas. This person got lost. This guy can't find his wife. This wife wakes up without her husband. 
a crazy thing. People passing away mysteriously. Make sure someone knows where you are, what your moves are. It is okay to have at least one person and I'm an introvert I have literally zero friends so even for myself there's still always one person one person that the police could talk to is say okay she was where she said what share your deets with the people closest to you uber tracking share your location do your research and your due diligence with the airbnb hosts like myself make sure that they're safe so usually try to look for a super host if possible try to live on the same compound that they're living on or not be that far away in distance keep your passport on you at all times while traveling or at least keep a copy of your passport you have some people who are against taking their passport with them and you have some people that are against keeping it at the airbnb or not keeping it at the airbnb vice versa i would say do what you feel is best for you keep your things on you try to have a little crossbody don't try to be too too flashy and i'm not saying you can't go out and get dressed up and look great because you can you're allowed to do that just be mindful of your surroundings be mindful of where you are and know what's smart and what's not only you'll know that based on the country that you're going to stay away from sketchy areas without someone who knows the area if you are not a veteran or seasoned traveler don't try to go off on the beaten path by yourself just don't don't be dumb don't do it i'm a seasoned and veteran traveler i'm still only going to go where i know it's safe i'm going to have somebody guide me at least at least the first or second time before i go and travel that path alone another thing that's super important that i don't i don't think a lot of travelers talk about or at least I haven't heard a lot of travelers talk about it, registering with the U.S. Embassy. You need to know the exact location of the U.S. Embassy for each country that you visit in the event that something happens, whether it's a natural disaster or another type of unfortunate incident. If you're taking an Uber or whatever other country's version of Uber, Lyft, make sure you match up the plates with the car. If something is off, do not be afraid to use your voice and say, um... On the app, it says your car is red. Why is it blue? Take out the Google Translate. If there's a language barrier, have that conversation. Before you get in, don't just get in and trust it. Have that conversation. Let them know. Ah, ah, it does not match. You don't feel comfortable. It doesn't feel right. Use that intuition. It is a gift. You should already have your destination already pre-planned out. You could be following them on your Google map, making sure they're going exactly where your phone says you're supposed to be going. For myself as a solo traveler, I am not a fan of traveling at night. The only time I'll travel at night or you'll see me traveling at night is if I'm coming back from an event that just so happened to last all night. And even then, I am letting someone at the place know that I'm leaving and there's communication when I make it back to my Airbnb. And if I didn't mention this earlier while talking about bank accounts and having backup cards, uh, backup funds, backup access to your online funds. It's also important to make sure that you get the currency that you need from your bank before you head to the country that you're going so that you are not charged an arm and a leg in currency exchange rates. Or if you're getting to the, a country where everything shuts down at eight o'clock and now you just reached your destination and it's 10 o'clock and everything in the airport is shut down and now you're stuck like Chuck. The money exchange booth is closed. The cell phone companies are closed. Be prepared. Also be mindful of how much currency you do have, how much time you're spending in this place. For those of you who may not be full-time solo traveling like myself, where you're just staying for a week or a weekend, don't take $8,000 in damn currency. And you know you're not going to spend it all. Because when you try to get that money back into U.S. dollars, you're going to be upset. Make sure you have your yellow fever vaccinations. There are plenty of countries that require it and then there are plenty of countries where they say it's recommended even if the place is not your final destination there are some countries that still would ask you to see it even if you're just a transient and listen there's plenty more information where this comes from all right feel free to share amongst one another in the comments section if there's something that i forgot just let me know I just wanted to give the basics or the things that I feel is just most important. And it's so important to reiterate this, even if it sounds like me or someone else is a broken record. But it's important. It is important because the things that we hear about and the things that people are running into while traveling, it could have been prevented. All right, Royal Family, I hope you enjoyed this video. There is much more content to come. I'm super excited to continue to share my journeys with you all. I understand that I said that I wasn't sure when I was coming back. I know I left you all pretty sad when I was in Thailand, and I would say that I'm sorry about that, but I'm not. The ebbs and flow of my journey 
in these chapters of my life, they're doing what they do and in such a beautiful way. So until next time, adios and pura vida.